Man, yeah, going behind. Oh, but Azu Kong having none of it, going for another one, pin. One, two, three, and that there was... we go. It's the shock that did it there, not the... May did not expect a pin off of that. An absolute mugging. Oh, he's going to the backwards Rainmaker. Rainmaker! He didn't even... Surely not. One, two, three. Oh, oh my God. unbelievable shock. Podmania Pro Wrestling presents... With WrestleMania week putting pay to our planned episode last week, we return this week for episode three of Fight Club and another unmissable night of wrestling action. With Aja Kong making a definitive statement by destroying Mayu Iwatani in short order in last show's main event, the quest is on to see who else can qualify for the PPW Valkyrie Championship Battle Royal. This week, Azumi replaces Gail Kim in a qualifying match against the self-proclaimed baddest woman on the planet, Ronda Rousey. After being so dominant in his previous Global Elite Crown Tournament block match against Kazuchika Okada, yet ultimately coming away with nothing, Stan Hansen looks to right the wrongs in his Block A match with the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi. In our main event this evening, we catch our first glimpse of Samoa Joe in action as he makes his tournament berth against a Kurt Angle who sits on zero points, having lost his opening match in relatively embarrassing circumstances to Kenny Omega. Without further ado then, ladies and gentlemen, we head once more to ringside for the opening bout as we join our commentary team of Rob Goodwin, Chris O'Brien and Garth Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving up in the world this week. We've got fucking entrances, lads. <laughs> Look at this. Um, oh my god. Azumi coming down to the ring, she refused to play anywhere with less than 200 people. <laughs> Speaking of Azumi, uh, Gail Kim has pulled out of her scheduled match with Ronda Rousey, a no show. We will have more on that for you in the coming weeks. But of course, this is for qualification for our PPW Valkyrie Championship Battle Royal. Uh, Rhea Ripley and a Aja Kong already qualifying. Aja Kong making short work of May Wuitani in last week's main event. Garth, is Ronda Rousey the person to stop Aja Kong? I don't know, because that last week was decimation. It was not what we expected, but I don't know. I mean, this is Zumi's chance to to sort of capitalise on Gil Kim's frankly disgraceful act of nonchalance. But Ron, so, Ron Rousey taking the right approach for trying to take the legs out of the high speed ace of stardom. Because Azumi used to working very, very fast. Has experience up against MMA type people in Konami and especially Shiri. He does have a UFC record. Look at the dissidents there. <laughs> oh, Azumi's a little shit. <laughs> <laughs> no fear in Azumi whatsoever. Oh, big Hurricane Rana early from Ronda Rousey. Rana? One. So yeah, oh. Gil Kim will be dealt with. Of course, Azumi going through that phase every teenager goes through where you're just sticking the middle finger up because you think it's cool. I don't think I ever really grew out of that. No, you didn't, did you? No. <laughs> neither, neither did Stone Cold. <laughs> it oh, was good for Stone Cold. He didn't grow out of it, he grew into it. So just out of interest, Garth, as head of talent relations, how are you going to deal with Gail Kem's, quite frankly, absolutely disgusting lack of respect for PPW? Wait, when the fuck did she become head of talent relations? <laughs> <laughs> when did the clearly the most qualified here. <laughs> that is true. He has a job for a start, a which rules me and you out. I think, I don't know, I mean, obviously she's lost her spot in the qualification. We're just going to have to see where she lands 
when or if she bothers to come in. But at the end of the day, we do only have 15 women, so she'll, pro she'll probably have a match. <laughs> well, there's plenty of free talent out there. We do. We have. We could bring in Santina Morella. Good. Famed fem women's wrestler. Yeah, Santina Morella. Entrant into the Women's Royal Rumble. User of Billy and Chuck's theme song. So far, a very, very even contest here. Very even, yeah, but you can see the difference in styles, just how they throw their forearms. Ronda's throwing very small, very snug forearms, whereas Azumi's stepping back, trying to get as much power in, because she just doesn't have the power. Into the amber. Oh, well, um, bar. This is I know. This has finished many an accomplished fighter, like Stephanie McMahon. Um, that's stretch. Oh, yeah, Stephanie McMahon. Like, the elite of wrestling. The Creator elite, of all women. The, the elite. The elite. Oh. Creator of women's wrestling. Oh, speaking of Stephanie one. McMahon. From <laughs> no fucking chill on this. Oh, full mount into a armbar. Wanted to be to a move. Imagine if Ronda Rousey taps to an armbar. Ironic. Ultimate. Oh, big Samoan oh, drop. Big Samoan drop. Nice. Of course, Ronda Rousey not being paid. She's being paid in exposure. Um. <laughs> Azumi, of course, the biggest star. Of course. Oh, big run. Nice. Quick run one. See, this is how Azumi tries to end matches. Her finishing move is the Azumi Sushi, which sees her roll up her opponent. Oh, Ooh, trying oh, to... Nice reversal there from Ronda Rousey. Went for a full back mount, got reversed into a Niba. Shades of Kurt Angle in, in our first ever match here in PPW. <laughs> Kurt Angle, of course, in action later on tonight. Oof. One. Be enough. Surely oh. not. There's a lot left Big in job, this Kingler. match. Zumi's taken control of this. She really has. She, well, she's got more of a gas tank than Ronda does. Ronda used to go in sm short five-minute rounds. Armbar in. I think we need to appreciate as well that Ronda Rousey prepared for Gail Kim today, not mm -hmm. Azumi. Very different yeah. competitors. For example, Azumi can Very wrestle. Different. And the zoomy shows up. That, that, that does help. Oh, and a big armbar. Into the armbar again. It kind of shows how much tougher the pro wrestlers are to pro fighters because pro fighters would tap out straight away. <laughs> you wonder how many more of those armbars Azumi can endure before she just hasn't got enough left in the tank. Well, her offense isn't really arm based, so she can survive with just her feet. Correct. She won't be able to throw the Mystica though. Or no. the cross arm breaker. No, but. Big slam. Azumi, of course, the youngest competitor we have here in PPW. Yep. Just 15 years old. She's not 15. What the f. <laughs> we. <laughs> and just 9 years old, Azumi <laughs> is the youngest competitor. <laughs> We, fu we fucking brief him as well, ladies and gentlemen. He just doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Head of talent relations. And <laughs> Head of talent relations. <laughs> she walked into his office today to see if she can get the match now that Gail Kim hasn't shown up. And he was like, oh, did your mother bring you? <laughs> I need a signed letter from your parents. <laughs> and I got it. So that's why she's in the house. <laughs> Ain't no mass transients in here. <laughs> Up to the top rope, Azumi. What's coming I next? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did suggest. Good for the money. I did suggest New Jack, New Jack for <laughs> head of talent relations, but that was shot down straight away. We ran the last three shows not having a head of talent relations or really any HR team. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the reply we got from New Jack was um, "fuck you, motherfuckers." Um, then there were some profanities, but we won't say on air. Oh, into a oh, variation. Very I'm, nice. Unless we lock there. I'm not going to try and name the actual lock because MMA fans are really mean. Uh, <laughs> another big takedown. Not going for the armbar, but I'm going for something different. Oh, knocks her down. Shades of bits of Haru Misawa. Straight into the armbar again, though. Is this enough? No, we're zooming out again. The resilience of this 12 year old is unreal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's she Go thinking here? Oh, a Tarantula. A Tarantula. 
good measures. Another one. Shades of Katsuyu yep. Shibata. Again. Shades of Heskey. <laughs> the fact that that's the one footballer you know. So that's the, that's the thing you throw out. I know other, it. I know other footballers. Um, David Beckham. Well done. Uh, Guillotine. Um, Guillotine, is this enough? Wayne, no. Wayne Rooney. Stuart Dallas. Who? The Man City Stuart. Slayer. <laughs> We've got me absolutely bare points this week. Yep. Oh, a series of forearms turning around. Ooh, ooh, ooh it's oh, thinking really. point around. No. Turned around. Too close rope to the ropes, though. Rope break. That's fair, bear, be of course, being fair. Shame, Shame a man. man punches, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, WrestleMania highlight mate. Shane McMahon last night. Of course. There we go. Roll up. One, two, three. Oh, big roll up. He's done it. In the longest women's match in PPW history. Azumi has With... toppled. The baddest woman on the planet, Ronda Rousey, she qualifies, the third competitor to qualify for our PPW Valkyrie Championship Battle Royal. Garth, surely that's a huge shock. Massive shock and delivers the most devastating move in wrestling history, the roll-up. Of course, <laughs> of course. Um, Chris, did you see that coming? Um, well, it, it really depended on how much distance that Azumi could achieve, and she's achieved a lot of distance. Ronda really needed to keep her in her grasp, but she just couldn't do. She was struggling throughout the whole time just to keep her close, because if Azumi gets that distance, she, you're not going to win. That's no, her whole style, her high, that high-speed style. Very well, impressive. With that, with that, ladies and gentlemen, with that shock result opening PPW Fight Club this week, we move on to our GEC tournament as we roll on to the second matches for competitors. We're going to start with some block A action with Stan Hansen and Hiroshi Tanahashi, both looking to get off that duck, both with losing starts to their block matches. We'll see which one of them comes on top next. feel like we should mention as well, not only have we upgraded venue, but the matting, the infamous PPW matting from around the ring uh, has been upgraded as well, Garth. I believe you were instrumental in the upgrading of our shit-ass mattresses that were outside yeah. there before. I had to retire those old, old guys. They're now hanging up in a museum. <laughs> or oh, wrestling museum. <laughs> <laughs> what, so we have only the best high-quality soft matting, which... Stan Hunter was one of the guys who was, was sort of against it. He sort of, why do we need thick, thick mats outside, you he, bunch of pussies? He's infamous for ripping mats up and slamming, well, predominantly Japanese people onto the concrete, so... Yeah, so... Well, are we going to see that today? <laughs> Bear Bear needs to keep his wits about him in this match. Yeah, of course, Stan Hansen a big bear himself. <laughs> Just a shaved bear. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget this is Block A action. Hiroshi Tanahashi coming out on the losing side in that absolute epic match with Mitsuhara Masawa on the debut episode of Fight Club. And Stan Hansen losing last week in the Battle of the Lariats against Kazuchika Okada. Both will want to make amends. There are no rest days in this tournament at all. Apart from the several going... weeks between Tanahashi's last match. Well... The one week. The one week, Chris. You can do a lot in a week. You can. Mm. That is true. That is true. Fair Bear raised a kid in that week. Uh, um, they're not sort of pulling any punches here straight up from the off. Enough. Well, Stan Hansen is oh. not exactly known for the pulling of punches. <laughs> is that subtle as <laughs> <He's... laughs> a brick? <laughs> Stan Hansen is what you think your granddad is when you're a child. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd be engaging in a striking contest with uh, Stan Hansen, Hiroshi Tanahashi. No, but that's a lot of Tanahashi's early offense. What he really needs to do is take the legs out of Hansen. A lot of what he was doing with Misawa actually would work here. Mm -hmm. But of course, it didn't work against Misawa. Oh, Singway didn't work. This is also a good tactic. But given Stan Hansen yeah. space is scary, though, because he can hit that lariat out of absolutely nowhere. 
He really can. As he did on several occasions against Kazuchika Okada in his last outing. Will he learn not to go cocky against these New Japan wrestlers who can put you in a way in a strike flash? I don't think Tanahashi's um, slapping Hansen in the face is really going to help matters. Well, Tanahashi doesn't really throw closed fists. It's not within his nature. Big DDT. Ooh. First, bo first bomb of a match. First actual move, I believe, Stan oh. Hansen has used. Oh, it's the dirty heel tactics. Old school. Well, Stan Hansen is not, shall we say, disciplined. But you can say human. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a disciplined wrestler. He just likes to fight. His name is but Finley. Like Finley? <laughs> My name's Finley, and I love to fight. I love to fight. I can't do oh. an accent. <laughs> Right, I can't, I, can't, I can't do accents, okay? This has been established for a long time. You can't even do your own accent. I, I can, but I just don't have the accent I want. Ooh, went for a oh, well. big shoulder oh, tackle. Yeah, a couple of times he's tried that. Oh, it's big power bomb, power folding power bomb. One, two, oh. <laughs> oh, okay, I got three there. <laughs> fair bear there with an extremely fair count. One Oof. big clubbing so blow to the chest. 20 minute time limit in these block matches if this, as we approach the seven and a half minute mark. If this match was wrestled on points, Hansen would easily be winning. Yeah. Well, we said this against Okada last week. He can't afford to but just needs... win on points. He needs to be able to put these wrestlers away. And don't forget, Stan Hansen is still a favorite to win his block he is and i think what we need to remember is we said it last week against okada new japan workers are not used to working to a strict time limit yeah they are used to feeling having a period of feeling their opponent out some say that this is all pointless and i would argue it is but <laughs> that is why they've j made the jump from new japan to fight club themselves. Test themselves against the true best in the world. Unceremoniously booted in the face. But I don't think it's again. Stan Hansen doesn't really do ceremony. <laughs> Just ceremonies of pain. Should be his tag team name. Ceremonies <laughs> of pain. Who's? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I... who could he be in a Him... tag team with? Do you think? Uh... Him and Bull Nakano. There's no. There's still no ceremony there. <laughs> Stacks him up again. Another big power bomb. One, two, three. Oh, oh my god, god. the closest of the two counts there. Stan Hansen well, being. She's not really offering much at all. Oh, Lariat. Big oh. Western Lariat. That has One, to be it. Two, three, and it is. Jesus. Was... Stan Academic. Hansen steamrolling his way past Hiroshi Tanahashi. And Chris, you mentioned last week that Hansen had to learn from not putting Okada away last week, and it seems he's learned it here. Yeah, he was very smart. He never let Tana, unless Tanahashi was forcing him into it, he never let Tanahashi leave his perimeter up until the point where he wanted to hit that lariat. That's the only time he let Tanahashi get any distance because Tanahashi was just out of that point. I mean, Garth, where does Tanahashi go from here? He's got two matches left in this block he's bottom with no points he has to win them both and i just can't see where he's going to pick up that win he's been very lackadaisical and quite like, just not urgent no urgency in his performances so far mm, it's uh it's not looking good for hiroshi tanahashi who of course faces uh adam cole Bebe, and kazuchika okada are his final block matches but with that being said that is block a taken care of for tonight we move on next to block b action where two more competitors who sit on zero points lock horns in our main event block b action samoa joe in his first encounter in the global elite crown tournament goth is your money on Samoa Joe tonight? It's going to be tough. Um, we know that Joe and Angle have a storied past. Um, it literally could go either way to flip of a coin for this one, I think. 
Kurt Angle, of course, at the moment, bottom of the block, having Look. lost to Kenny Omega on the inaugural episode of... In an inaugural Mike match. In the inaugural match, indeed. Um, Chris, out of these two men, Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle, who is your money on? Well, it's interesting. These two have a fairly even record. And also, Kurt Angle, we have to admit, looking much better than last time. Yeah, he's felt. He's very clearly went to the gym. He is felt. He's <laughs> maximizing the space he has. He's not overexerting himself against the bigger Joe. Samoa Joe, of course, one of the bigger men in his block, other than the limitless one. Um, I, I'd have, I, again, it kind of depends on who gets the early advantage. If Angle can start targeting the legs and go for a tap out, maybe, because I don't think he's going to hit power moves up on Joe. No. Of course, what we have to remember is these two know each other inside out. Several matches in TNA over the TNA Championship. But of course, the most famous encounter in a cage. Big atomic drop there from Samoa Joe. And maybe a match as well. Yeah, what we have to understand is Samoa Joe... Kurt Angle has been in Samoa Joe's head from the moment he these two have crossed paths. He, of course, Angle giving Samoa Joe his first loss in TNA. Kurt Angle, though, full of respect for Samoa Joe. There is a begrudging respect between these two fighters. Yes, but respect from the free eyes. <laughs> Kurt Angle got, got more of his submissions than his normal bomb, which bombs which he was definitely going for on Omega last week. Not last Absolutely. week, two weeks ago. But of course, that wasn't enough for Omega. But Omega and Samoa Joe, believe it or not, not completely different fighters. They, all, they both want to create distance. They both want to start hitting you with their bombs. The only difference is 10 of Kenny Omega's hits are going to be as impactful as one of Samoa Joe's just based on the tight, just based on the height difference and also the discipline. Samoa Joe, of course, a very ankle lock. Into the ankle lock. An Both. early attempt at the ankle lock. Oh, great Oh, he's it. got it cinched in. So, so Samoa Joe managed to get out somewhere. of it. Of course, both these men... Jaw for his power moves. Both these men are extremely disciplined athletes. You don't get... And out, oh, Jesus Christ. Over the top of the... Over the top the of the post. post. Jesus. Good thing we've got that new mat, that mat and down. <laughs> if that happened in the old arena, we wouldn't have a Samoa Joe anymore. We'd just have... <laughs> a, dirty, a dirty mark on the floor. <laughs> we, already have, that. we already have dirty marks. They're called the PPW Ultras. <laughs> Oh, big uh, Urinagi. Jesus. Oh, Huge Urinagi. And that's turned them Straight on the neck. These two are not wasting any time. They know their matches tend to go longer than 20 minutes, and they can't let that happen here. Big Ben's about They argue, though, that Kurt Angle, they're going the right way about this match. He's not letting Samoa Joe get in his head. Samoa Joe is a very intimidating figure. Even sitting at commentary, we, you know he can destroy half the people in that ring. And Absolutely. Kurt Angle knows this first hand, losing his TNA Championship to him in a cage. Oh, takedown. Into a grapevine. Give up. Give up. Of course, Again, cutting down the base of the big man. That's what you should be doing. Oh, no, weird oh, naked, yeah. weird naked clutch. Give up. Give up. I've, got, I've never got the weird naked choke, because it's from the rear bit. It's definitely not naked. Big power bomb. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm going this track. We here at high Fight Class, High Class Commentary here in BPW. Of course, we are here at Fight Club, uh, sponsored by Jesus okay. Christ. Oh, we here at Fight Club, of course, uh, sponsored by Guten Bourbon, the German urban bourbon. <laughs> I'm going to try for a pin there. Um, Chris, I'm going to have to ask you this, and this is probably the most important part of this match. <laughs> Enormous release German from Kurt Angle. Is Fairbear a female? Um, he's gender fluid. Well, they're gender fluid. Another enormous, <laughs> enormous suplex from Kurt. What? But Samoa Joe is up first. Last time oh, when so, last time someone asked Fairbear their gender, they came forward and said, "I don't care about gender. I am a bear." I think that's a reasonable response. To be perfectly honest, as we watch Kurt Angle literally tossing Samoa Joe like a big angle slam. Angle slam. One, two, 
three. It Look. is it. Jesus, Kurt, Kurt Angle. Angle. Coming back, for look, looking like a better man, shaking off. Uh, he still needs to win as many matches as possible, though, because with Kenny Omega as a tiebreaker, that's one hell of a tiebreaker. Absolutely. And again, you look at these blocks, Chris. He moves on to two points at the top of the block with Kenny Omega and Keith Lee. But you look at Kurt Angle's matches, who he has left. He's still got Dragon Lee. He's still got Keith Lee. He's got two enormous matches there. He's so, got to win both. With Keith Lee, I don't think he's worried because he has a history of taking on Giants, as we've just seen. But Dragon Lee, he's historically had issues with Luchas. Could prove very, very difficult later on. Um, Garth, as we close our main event with a decisive victory from Kurt Angle, are you surprised how well Kurt bounced back from his loss against Kenny Omega? I don't know. I mean, we know, we know how driven Kurt can be. We know how intense he can become and we know how once he's in the head of Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe can suffer those defeats but I didn't expect it to be as sort of like the power game on mm -hmm. Angle's part so it was an impressive victory and Joe just needs to sort of pick himself up and, and get, a, get a win as quick as he can well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this, the third episode of PPW Fight Club. Join us again, same time, same place next week. Ready as we continue, the GEC tournament rolls on and gets really into the nitty gritty and the blocks start to take shape. We'll also have more qualifiers if all the women turn up to our PPW Valkyrie Battle Royal and the tag team single elimination tournament will also roll on. So from me, goodbye, Goth and Chris. Would you like to say your goodbyes? Bye, bitch. Adios.